We need to take a little detour and to talk about VCRs and today's digital equivalents. Had Disney and Universal Studios had their way in 1976, these things wouldn't exist. Sony had been making Hollywood and the networks very nervous since they released their first home video recorder in 1965. This thing was huge. It was the size of two suitcases. It had a built-in TV and used big reels of videotape. And yes, it was tremendously expensive. Hollywood and the networks didn't like the idea that a regular person might do something more than just sit there and watch the movie or TV show as it came through their television. Tape it for later viewing when it was more convenient? Share the tape with a friend? Or worse, give a copy to a friend? All this leads back to the notion of copyright. Who has the right to make a copy of a piece of intellectual property created by someone else? Videotape threatened to give too much power to civilians over what they watched and when. Universal and Disney filed a lawsuit against Sony, and this became known as the Betamax case, and it went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. After three years of study, the court ruled in 1984 that VCRs were legal by a 5-4 to four vote. All right, so what does this have to do with music? Well, the right to copy, of course. Recording a TV show isn't really much different than dubbing a record or a CD to tape so you can listen to it in your cassette player, is it? As a result of the Betamax case, making mixtapes became legal. Or less illegal, anyway. But the industry still fought back. There was much angst when stereo manufacturers started selling dual cassette decks, which made for easy copying of tapes. CDs were a problem because anybody could make a clean copy from its digital bits. And then there was another giant brawl in 1987 over another Sony invention, digital audio tape. Unlike the old analog cassettes, digital audio tape could make an exact copy of a record or a CD with no noise or hiss or degradation in sound quality. Make one copy of an album on a DAT tape and you had a perfect master that could be used to make even more perfect copies. Copies of copies of copies of copies? No problem. Music industry associations around the world ganged up on Sony and DAT manufacturers. Through some very fierce lobbying, they managed to get governments around the world to do two things. First, a special fee was levied on blank digital tape with the money destined for right holders who would have no doubt been ripped off by illegal copies. And second, all DAT machines had to have a copy lock function, which prevented the machine from making a copy of a copy. These two concepts killed the DAT machine for consumers and smothered its successor, the digital compact cassette, for the consumer market. It also hobbled the growth of the mini disc, another Sony invention that promised digital mixtape life beyond the cassette. But for a short while, select albums were made available for sale on pre recorded DAT tape and mini discs for the consumers who wanted them. One DAT and mini disc friendly album was The Substance Collection from New.